night, as per usual, I wake up about five o'clock in the morning. And it was still dark outside. And I realized that many of the lights in this in neighboring buildings would be turned off. So the, so the sky would be as dark as it's gonna get from this particular location. What was most important to me was what is called the transparency of the sky. In other words, how bright the stars were. The next thing that was important to me was that the sky is properly oriented for observing. For myself, the best way to observe the heavens is what is called culmination. In other words, the stars go through an arc through the night. They reach a highest point and they start going down like this. The sky where the stars are as far overhead as possible is the clearest, most transparent part of the sky. You get the best view of the heavens directly overhead. It makes perfectly good sense. The question for me was, was directly overhead going to be along the length of the valley because we have mountains in one direction and mountains in the other? or were the stars going to culminate in the direction of the mountains? Because if they culminate in the directions of the mountains, you'd never be able to see the deep south of the sky from this location because the canyon would block the stars. This is an excellent little terrazzo. Last night I came and I lay down with my head near this bulkhead right here because there were some lights and they were interfering, interfering with my view. The lights here are astro sensitive, they're amber lamps. I spent some time orienting myself to the night sky here. The valley runs pretty much a true south overhead to north. So setting up an astronomical observatory in this valley would work actually quite well. You'd be limited, of course, to culminating objects in the sky. The zenith here is 25 degrees south latitude. And on that zenith, zenith if I had stayed up late enough into the morning, I would have seen Sirius culminating over my head. So I stepped outside to see what the orientation of the valley is, of the canyon. And magnificently, this canyon is oriented perfectly south to north, which means you can see deep, deep, deep down into the southern sky, and you can see far, far up into the northern sky, which meant that in the course of the night, every star that you can see from 25 degrees south latitude where we are located would be right overhead from the north, where I usually do astronomy from, to the south. Particularly what I wanted to do was figure out what the look of what is called the Milky Way or the Via Lacto is from this location. And magnificently, at this time of year, at that time of the day, the milk, what is called the Southern Milky Way, goes directly down south from this location. So just after spring here in the Southern Hemisphere, which is the fall in the Northern Hemisphere, you get a magnificent view of the Southern Milky Way. And not only that, you can see both of the Magellanic clouds, which were discovered by Magellan when he sailed south around to get around South America and original discoveries of the Pacific Ocean. Also, I was interested in seeing the brightest stars visible in the sky. And incredibly, Canopus, which is the second brightest star in the sky seen from Earth at night, was right there visible about 30 degrees south and slightly west 
of Sirius, which is the brightest star in the sky. Now, what was really, really excellent was that Orion was directly, almost directly overhead. The stars Rigel, Betelgeuse, and Bellatrix, I could see the constellation of Orion wonderfully. And the best way to see it was to lay with my back to the, in the terrazzo floor upstairs, with my head to the north and my feet to the south. That way, I could see Orion just the way we see from the Northern Hemisphere. So here's Orion, and then below that is a constellation I've seen before called Lepus, the hare. But below that, I had never really observed before. And I can't tell you what the constellations are because I'm not familiar with the Southern Hemisphere sky. But beautifully, as I explained, I could see the Southern part of the Milky Way go down past what is called Canis Major, the big dog, right? I could see, it actually descends through Monoceros, which is a very obscure constellation, and then just continued on south, just slightly east of overhead. And then, as I waited for about an hour, Acrux, which is the Southern Cross, became visible deep, deep, deep in the south. And Acrux is a very beautiful constellation. It looks kind of like Cygnus, but a smaller one. And it is close to the south pole of the sky and is used by navigators to determine where the south pole is because there is no Polaris in the southern hemisphere. This is an entirely different view of the Andes here. We're looking north. The earlier view is more or less south and east. is north and east. On the basis of all this, mm -hmm. I could clearly recommend Elki Valley and this town which is Pisco? Pisco Elki. Pisco Elki. Mm -hmm. To any amateur astronomers who want to come down, spend some time in the Andes Mountains, and observe the deep heavens, especially during the spring in the southern hemisphere, which is the fall in the northern hemisphere, because this is when you get to observe the deep sky going south, beginning with, let's say, Pegasus in the north, which would probably be the only constellation you see further north, all the way down, and if you observe throughout the night, you'll see the Milky Way drift overhead, you'll see Acrox, you'll see the Magellanic Clouds. Now, if you come later in the year, in the winter, you'll see them earlier in the evening. So, what a wonderful oscillation for amateur astronomers to travel from Del Norte, watching the galaxies of spring, Del Norte, and the Milky Way of Del Norte in the summer. And then, when it gets to be about fall, and Pegasus is up there, and you can see the Andromeda Galaxy, come south and spend several, one or two weeks observing the night sky from one of these hostels, such as where we're staying now. Right now, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon local time. The sun has progressed maybe 10 degrees from culminating, which means due south is right in this direction here. So if we swing due south where those clouds are in the distance and go right over the top, that would be north. Meanwhile, we have this ridge to the east. And that ridge would block the heavens the first 30 degrees or so of sky. So you wouldn't see things rising from this point on the horizon. And what you have here 
are closer hills blocking the view to the west. The result being, as explained before in this video when we were sitting around the table, you basically get directly overhead, north to south, in the south about 10 degrees from the horizon, which means you would see a pole star if there were one out there. And in the north, if you would see stars maybe as far north as I saw last night, which was Castor and Pollux. So you would see part of the ecliptic, where the planets roam through the sky. You can see some cab cabanas, cabins, being constructed to the west. It's very unlikely that you'd have a good view of the south from that location, although the western view would also be blocked by that hill. So anything that's too close to the western ridge of this valley would probably not give you the deep south that I described earlier. So we'd have to push on further towards the east over here to get that view. To my left is a little reservoir and you can see the water flowing down into the valley to the vineyards. Looking off into the valley, further off, you can see the dif distant southern horizon. If I were to build an observatory, ideally, at any point, it would be right along this reservoir. Because then you'd have the deep south here, the calming sound of the water flow, and you'd have a view of the end to the north, the deep north. Spectacular, except for one problem. You would have vehicles driving by at night, spilling white into the, into the observatory. However, if it were elevated enough, let's say up there, that would not be a problem. Here's my ride. Adios! The valley has a riparian area. There's no more vineyards here. It's all trees. There's probably a stream that flows down there. These trees receive water all the way around. Very prosperous road. Of course, you can see many houses down below as well. Those locations would probably be acceptable as well for any kind of uh, amateur observatory. Keep in mind, only amateurs would be interested in such an observatory because uh, all the neighboring uh, dust and traffic and lights and people coming and going, as well as not being at a super high altitude, would discourage people from setting up a professional observatory at such a location. We just pulled over to the side of the road, and from this point, you can see pretty much everything you'd want to see. Maybe not quite as far south as you could down lower from certain vantages, but acceptably low. The sun is still progressing west. It's well overhead, so we know we're looking due south at this point. It would be a reasonably low south. You'd be able to see the south circumpolar region. So there would be no problem with also having an observatory anywhere along this location. Then we turn north, however, and we start to lose it a little bit. But most amateur astronomers who might be willing to travel to this area would, not, would be far less concerned about the northern view than the southern. However, we can no longer see the deep south, so this would not be a good area for Astro because of that, but it is a lovely area nonetheless here in the Elkin Valley. There is an Astro Turismo location here for those of you who want to capture the name. Right there. The question then becomes whether they actually have an observatory or not.